This is Discovering the Scriptures with Dr. Peter John Parises. Currently we are in Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. King Nebuchadnezzar is talking to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They are Chaldean given names. And I'm going to read from the King James Bible. Quote, Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sapbuck, psalmstery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fierce furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Unquote. Let's go to God in prayer now. Father, we are here before you in prayer, seeking what only you can give us, wisdom and knowledge of your word. Open us to hearing your Holy Spirit through us, our teacher. Help us to hear and understand your word. Give us the wisdom and knowledge that we need. Help us to put away all prayer hindrances and sins. Be forgiven. Help us to forgive one another and love one another. To draw closer to you. To love ourselves and to love our neighbors as you love us. Make us one with you. Help us as we go through the day that we'll meditate upon your word. Grant us, Father, wisdom and knowledge. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. I also ask that you would please speak with us as we give you a moment in silence. And if need be, we'll click the pause button on the recording here so we can spend even more time with you. Please speak with us now. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Okay. Thank you. Now let's go forward and, and hear this verse in another translation first. We're going to go ahead and go to the Young's Little Translation. Quote, Now lo, ye are ready, so that at the time that ye hear the voice of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sapbuck, the psalmstery, and the symphony, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and do obediency to the image that I have made. And lo, ye do not obediency, in that hour ye shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fierce furnace. Who is that God who doth deliver you out of my hands? Reading the verses in context, the paragraph is from Daniel chapter 3 verse 13 through Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. Reading from the King James Bible, quote, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sapbuck, psalmstery, and dulcimer, in all kinds of music ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fierce furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Unquote. Now, as we parse out this verse, I want you to notice that the king is casually, it appears to be reading his, his command at the beginning but he's just casually reading it. And when he gets down to talking about the punishment if you don't do it, he continues to talk casually about it. And then we see a change. So let's go through this first. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear. And we're going to parse out the ye hear in the Aramaic. It's a PL stem, so it's casual. And then it's an imperfect aspect because it's not been completed. The sound of the cornet, flute, harp, now, this harp has a footnote in the manuscripts uh, given. It's left alone, but there's a footnote given that they think that this might have been an error in writing, because this is all handwritten. 
and that this might have been added or translated wrong from the Aramaic into the Hebrew. It doesn't really matter. He's talking about musical instruments and what types were being played. They left it alone. They just made a footnote. So that's the only thing that's going on with this parsing here. Is they're saying it might be an error and we're leaving it alone. But if so, you know, what instrument was it? We don't know. We're going to continue that it might be a harp because David played a harp. But we're talking about musical instruments. That's really it. Continuing. Sapot, Psalmstry, and Dulcimer and all kinds of music. See, he talks about music, so it's, a, it's an instrument. Ye fall down. Let's look at that and parse that. That's a PL stem in perfect aspect. So again, it's casual. It's not a completed action. And worship. Let's parse that out. It's another PL stem in perfect aspect, so it's casually mentioned. The image, which I have made, has a PL perfect, so he's, you know, it's still casual, but he's talking about a completed action. Well, but if you worship another PL stem in perfect aspect, so casual, but not completed, not ye shall be cast. Now, this is an ithio, which is uh, similar to a Hebrew hephel, which is a form altered due to the initial uh, alphiel, but it reflects the reflective in intensive stem. So he's reflecting upon. Okay, so moving on, he should be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning. Let's do that, we'll parse that. PL stem, so casual. Active participle, so to be. Of a burning, fierce furnace. And who is that God? Now, let's define, is that God? And see what he's talking about in the translation of it. It's a God, a heathen deity. Is what it is. So it's just God, small g, is what this one is. He doesn't know who God is, even though he's had some interactions with him. Continuing, that shall deliver. Let's parse that out. And that's a peel stem, which reflects the passive intensive form in perfect aspects. And that completed. So he doesn't understand who God is. That shall deliver you out of my hands. Now that's the end of the parsing. I want to reflect on this. Let's reflect about what we're seeing, what we're reading. That's part of Bible study. We have him repeating his command and talking about in the same self fire thou should be you know, cast into the burning, fierce fire. Now, I would almost expect in this next part to be spoken by someone who does not believe God exists or doesn't believe that it's provable that God exists. Because he says, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So he's basically putting himself higher than any God. Is this man insane? Or it, does he think he's um, an intellectually smarter than everyone else? That there's no such thing as a God unless he makes it? And that no God is bigger than him? He doesn't rule the whole world. Is he insane? Is there a form of insanity going here? Or is he just a person that thinks more of himself than he should be? This is something that we need to find out. What is going on? What does the uh, commentator say about this? What does scripture say about this? What does it say in context? Because this is really getting to be quite a foolish, foolish man to be talking like this. And this is something that we need to find out. What's going on in his mind? which we'll discover more about him as we go along. But let's go ahead and take a look at the commentaries and see what they give us on this verse to find out what's, what's happening. We're pretty much tar on target as far as our observations go. But I do want to add in John Gill's last paragraph on this verse because I think it gives us some good insight to think about and meditate upon today. So I'm going to read that. Quote, And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? He knew their confidence in the God of Israel, which he attempts to break and remove. He foresaw the objection they would make when he endeavors to anticipate by this proud, vain boast, forgetting what he himself had said in Daniel chapter 2, verse 47. Unquote. Now I'm going to read chapter 2, verse 47, King James Bible quote. 
The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and of lords of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Unquote. So you notice that he doesn't have a personal walk with God. He just says and states things that you would give to any king or ruler that you're brought before or placed under. He is going ahead and acknowledging God in this verse. But later on, as we can see, he doesn't believe that anyone is above himself. Somehow, someway, he maneuvers in his thought pattern that he is the most supreme being above all gods. So this tells me that in his kingdom, it's flourishing. There are hardly any problems that cannot be solved because he has conquered and he keeps conquering. So we don't find any humbling whatsoever. That's what's going on in this verse. Now you need to continue on so we can discover more about who this Nebuchadnezzar is. How does this relate to the storyline that Daniel is writing on? This is a true story. I don't believe that this is a um, f fictional tale. Too much is going on. The writing is not of a casual uh, form or drama form. And Daniel is still writing in the Aramaic language, the court's language. So he's writing a document of history, of truth, for a reason. And we're going to see how that goes. Now may God richly bless you as you go about your ways. And please remember that our current ministry on YouTube is supported by your clicking on the ads that allows uh, money to be given by the advertisers to YouTube and then a portion is given to my ministry here which helps support it and also we're trying to raise the money to go nonprofit. right now we're currently at a couple hundred bucks per month from YouTube so it'd be really appreciated if you could click on as many ads as possible each time that you're listening. Thank you very much for supporting the ministry. May God richly bless you.